Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and start for Hannah. Mashallah. Yeah. Thank you. I was told to announce a singles Quran study this evening. So anyone that's, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I am also, um, I am the last German you're, you'll be hearing from, I promise. Um, everyone else has spoken. No, mashallah. Every, I love my family speeches. Um, so, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, shout out to my mom for signing me up for this speech without my uh, knowledge, and to Hossein for not letting me get, uh, get out of giving this speech, because I was <laughs> going to. But mashallah, they pushed me to strive, and I'm appreciative of that. Um, so today, I have two parts to my speech. Uh, part one is how to distinguish between believers and hypocrites. Uh, I felt that it was important for me to discuss this topic because with all the recent events, we need to confirm that we are always making a stance with God, which is also making a stance against the hypocrites. Uh, Surah 9, verse 101, entitled Retribution Doubled for the Hypocrites, says, Among the Arabs around you, there are hypocrites. Also among the... Oh, as well, I'm not sure you this morning. Sorry. Um, among the Arabs around you, there are hypocrites. Also among the city dwellers, there are those who are accustomed to hypocrisy. You do not know them, but we know them. We will double the retribution for them. Then they end up committed to a terrible retribution. And the footnote is important. It says... The hypocrites sit among the believers, listen to the message and proofs, um, and then they spread their poisonous doubts. It is a chronic law that they receive double the retribution now and forever. So through his messenger of the covenant, God tells us that the hypocrites will sit among the believers, which expresses that we should be able to distinguish between the two. Many of us have experienced uh, hypocrites exposing themselves in our community, but it's always good to review how we recognize the hypocrites. God begins Surah 2 of the Quran describing the righteous, the disbelievers, and the hypocrites. Um, people have read the, these verses, but I'll go over it again. So 1, the righteous, Surah 2, verse 3 says, Who believe in, in the unseen, observe the contact press a lot, and from our provisions to them they give to charity. And they believe in what was revealed to you and in what was revealed before you, and with regard to the hereafter, they are absolutely certain. These are guided by their Lord. These are the winners. The believers always support God and his messenger, 4810, and do not argue against what God has sent down. Their belief in the hereafter is shown through the killing of their egos, supporting the truth, and reflecting on themselves. They never ally themselves with the disbelievers instead of the believers, 3 verse 28, and they are kind and compassionate amongst themselves and harsh and stern against the disbelievers. Then there are the hypocrites, which is category 3. Sir, 2 verse 8 says, Then there are those who say we believe in God in the last day, while they are not believers. In trying to deceive God and those who believe, they only deceive themselves without perceiving. In their minds there is a disease. Consequently, God augments their disease. Uh, their disease. They have incurred a painful retribution for their lying. This information is extremely valuable because now we are aware that there are people who will say and pretend that they are with us, but are actually far astray. In verse 9, it says that they only deceive themselves without perceiving, not God nor the believers. This means that God will allow the believers to see right through their lies and recognize their hypocrisy. God provided us with this knowledge so that we can stay away from such evil people. Uh, continuing those verses, Sir 2 verse 11 says, When they are told, do not commit evil, they say, but we are righteous. In fact, they are evildoers, but they do not perceive. When they are told, believe like the people who believe, they say, they say, shall we believe like the fools who believed? In fact, it is they who are fools, but they do not know. When they meet the believers, they say, we believe. But when alone with their devils, they say, we are with you. We were only mocking. God mocks them and leads them on in their transgressions, blundering. The hypocrites continuously say that they are righteous and believe in God, but their actions are to the contrary. They mock the believers, and their ego completely overrides any chance of them reflecting on their belief or actions. In the clear examples that we have had in our community, the hypocrisy began with an understanding that went against the truth. And like Sherryar and Rod both touched on, there are no multiple truths. There is God's truth, and the believers uh, say we hear and we obey. Now, I'm sure there have been times when some of us didn't have the correct understanding, 
but we were able to kill our egos, reflect, hear the arguments, and make the right stance by God's leave. Unfortunately, the people straight off the right path could not let go of their understanding, so instead of correcting themselves, they molded the religion around their belief. We also learn from the Quran that God will expose the hypocrites for us. Surah 29 verse 11 says, God will most certainly distinguish those who believe, and he will most certainly expose the hypocrites. 3179 says, God is not to leave the believers as you are without distinguishing the bad from the good. So how does God expose the hypocrites? Surah 9 verse 94 entitled, Hard times serve to expose the hypocrites. They apologize to you when you return to them from battle. Say, do not apologize. We no longer trust you. God has informed us about you. God will see your works, and so will the messenger. Then you will be returned to the knower of all secrets and declarations. Then he will inform you of everything you had done. Surah 63 verse 4 says a chip on their shoulders. When you see them, you may be impressed by their looks, and when they speak, you may listen to their eloquence. They are like standing logs. They think that every call is intended against them. They are the real enemies. Beware of them. God condemns them. They have deviated. God will expose the hypocrites through their actions, which have been described in many verses, and they will be exposed by who they truly ally themselves with. The hypocrites never stand by God during arduous times and make excuses to defend their denying of the truth. We can and most definitely should distinguish the hypocrites from the believers, and God gives us the means to do so. The hypocrites will hear God's word, such as that God provides perfect health, wealth, and happiness to the believers, that there are hypocrites among us, that unity is about belief, not emotion, that the message of the covenant was sent to explain the message, and they will take offense to it. They hate the truth. It is important for us to recognize our true brothers and sisters in faith and support the believers. So this leads me into part two of my speech, which uh, is really one I wanted to uh, talk about, which is appreciation for the Simitter family. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to show some appreciation because I feel like we can all learn from this, and it's easy to forget that we have such an immense blessing with such a large community. So I have been in this community all my life, but there was a time when I didn't understand the true gift of having such a solid and large group of believers to practice with. My amazing parents, Michelle, raised me to be a good submitter, which allowed me to have the vital foundation of belief in God and knowing the means to attaining righteousness. But during middle school and the beginning, beginning of high school, I was still spending most of my time during, um, around my disbelieving friends. When I was 14, I began spending more of my time with the submitters uh, and the submitter youth, which are now no longer youth, and they started to recognize the immense, I started to recognize the immense benefits of being surrounded by true believers. Uh, Surah 18, verse 28, entitled Chronic Study Groups. You shall force yourself to be with those who worship their Lord day and night, seeking him alone. Do not turn your eyes away from him, from them seeking the vanities of this world, nor shall you obey one whose heart we rendered oblivious to our message. One who pursues his own desires and who, whose priorities are confused. So having this huge blessing so easily accessible, I began to take it for granted and not consider the significance of it. This is why I wanted to give this speech. I wanted to express how appreciative we should all be and how the devil will try his best to drive wedges between the believers. Surah 17 verse 53 says, Treat each other amicably. Tell my servants to treat each other in the best possible manner, for the devil will always try to drive a wedge among them. Surely the devil is man's most ardent enemy. And the Messenger of the Covenant um, explains this verse in Audio Sur 1419. I'm not going to be turning it on. It's just a few minutes. Oh, it's playing, is it? Oh, again. Mm, it's still not. Yeah. <laughs> if I can just, should I just like put it? Okay, I can do that too. The commandment told us we have to be very careful because this is taken. Last time, to borrow a question, I don't know what the connection is, but. Tell my chairman that you and I should treat each other in 
the best possible manner. For the devil will always try to drive a wedge among them. Didn't his last, you know, he failed to stop you from believing in God. He starts to, he failed to stop you from reading the Quran. He failed to stop you from being saved. So his last thing to do is to drive a wedge between the believers. So this would be a violation of God's statement that the believers are brothers and sisters. That the believers are one family. It's a statement that God made. And Satan wants you to contradict that statement by being averse to some other believers. So we have to go out of our way to, to make a backfire on Satan. <clears throat> if he tries to buy the word between you and another believer, you must reverse it. It takes work. <coughs> Pardon? 52. Oh, the day he summons you, you will respond by praising him. Oh, did I miss it? Yes. Okay. The day he summons you, you will respond by praising him, and you will then realize that you have lasted in this life for the first one. Really very short. It's sufficient for the test, but it's very short. Just think of all the years that went, went by so fast. Only yesterday we were checked on high school. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Tell my servants to treat each other in the best possible manner, for the devil will always try to drive away the among them. Surely the devil is man's most ardent enemy. For the people seek to drive away between you and your brother or sister, the believer, he can point at you and say, so, he or she is not a believer. So, you have that brotherhood, sister of fear, that you say. Satan will say that. And Satan uh, is the biggest cry baby. He just look for anything to claim you. So don't give him a stand. Okay, so I just wanted to point out that last part. Um, it says, he was saying, if Satan succeeds to drive a wedge between you and your brother or sister, the believers, he can point at you and say, look, he or she is not a believer. He doesn't have that brotherly or sisterly fe feeling. Satan will say that, and Satan is the biggest crybaby. Cry baby. He will look for anything to claim you, so don't give him a chance. The Messenger of the Covenant says this is Satan's last stand, so we must be vigilant against his attempts at driving a wedge. Of course, this has to do with personal issues, not religious ones. If someone is fighting the religion but claiming to be a submitter, we should look at their actions and make sure not to tolerate their disbelief. Sometimes submitters may take some time to come to the one correct understanding provided by God due to their own weaknesses. But as long as they are working on it, not fighting against the truth and reflecting, then we should be kind, compassionate, and encouraging. Sir 49 verse 10, entitled The Real Family, says the believers are members of one family. You shall keep the peace within your family and reverence God that you may attain mercy. If a fellow submitter has a personal trait that rubs you the wrong way, it may be a flaw in you, which you should reflect about, or you can remind them about it in the best possible manner for their own good. But don't let it cause you to have any negative feelings towards them. This could be an opportunity for Satan to make matters worse and cause a rift in the relationship. We have seen this time and time again. People with personal issues stray off the correct path because they cannot set aside their anger or hatred towards someone and stand with them when they were supporting the truth. They found any excuse to argue with the person they didn't like, and this eventually led them to arguing against the truth and against God. Surah 6, verse 52, And do not dismiss those who implore their Lord day and night, devoting themselves to Him alone. You are not responsible for their reckoning, nor are they responsible for your reckoning. If you dismiss them, you will be a transgressor. Unity of all submitters, 262. Surely those who, who believe, those who are Jewish, the Christians, the converts, anyone who, one, believes in God, two, believes in the last day, and three, leads a righteous life, will receive their recompense from their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. Believers are naturally united by their belief in God. We love the believers because they love God the most, and we should never disregard them due to personality differences. I've learned that there is so much we can learn from our fellow submitters rather than complain about. 
Of course, everyone has weaknesses, and some people have weaknesses that affect the way they interact with others, but we can always look for good qualities within them. Uh, I wanted to give a few examples um, from the people that I spend a lot of time around, and I just wanted to do a little bit of a shout out. Of course, I appreciate all the believers, and there's great qualities in everyone, um, but I'm going to start with Omid. Mashallah. I <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. Um, so he always looks at concepts and situations with a level head and logically, which I cannot say I do, unfortunately. Um, and according to the Quran, he doesn't let his emotions hinder his judgment or the way he acts in an intense situation. Um, so Mashallah, thank God, thank God for me. Um, and then Nusha. Uh, Nusha is incredibly appreciative. <laughs> they do deserve it. Um, she's incredibly appreciative. Uh, you could do the littlest thing for Nusha, and she will never tire of expressing her gratitude. But more importantly, Nusha consistently shows her appreciation of God for any gift that she receives. Mashallah. Um, Lisa. Lisa is extremely kind. <laughs> yes, let's do it on the there we go. Uh, Lisa is extremely kind and giving. Whether it is with her time, words, or love, she is always there for you. She will go out of her way to make your day, expecting nothing in return. Um, next is Elena. Uh, she always supports the truth no matter what situation she's in. Uh, she is straightforward and only fears God. Elena is the type of friend to tell you if there's food in your teeth or a booger in your nose. <laughs> She really wants the best for you, mashallah. Um, next is Riyasha. Riyasha's kindness surpasses so many others. She strives to be welcoming and warm to all believers, and she is incredibly genuine. Mashallah, sorry, I'm getting a little good, mashallah. Um, next is Natasha. <laughs> Natasha is a great example of someone who trusts in God. When it looks like things aren't going to work out, she will persevere just the right amount, uh, just the right amount longer and receives God's rewards. So much And last but not least, Serena. Mashallah. I have never seen her object. Seriously. <laughs> um, praise God. She is always submitting cheerfully to God. And she calms me down if I'm ever anxious just by setting the best example. Mashallah. Thank you, God, really. Um, so yes, I can point out wonderful examples of righteousness in every believer I know. And I suggest everyone tries to practice this as well, especially if they're feeling a negative way towards one of their brothers or sisters. Um, this is an important way to recognize that we should be appreciative and not complain. Um, we need to appreciate the gift that God has given us because there are many people who don't have access to such an awesome community. Thank you very much. Okay, we got quite a few hands. Let's, uh, let's start with, I guess, your brother who... Oh, okay. Uh, where's the other microphone? He's over. Oh, the... Noah, her brother. Where's the other microphone? <laughs> pass the other. Because I am sexist. Noah? I only Noah. Like and then after Noah, can you please pass it to Aaron Balthazer? Why didn't you shout out any of your family or Wamid or Nathan? <laughs> Because my appreciation for my family is obvious. I well, what love about Wamid so and Nathan? Much. Do you appreciate them too? I do appreciate them. All right. Mashallah. I appreciate Good. everyone. <laughs> I just want to jump on the bandwagon and do a shout out for Rod. He's one of the kindest believers that I know. Oh, Mashallah. Look at his face. <laughs> Look at his face. Can you please pass the microphone up to Solomon? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I know you men mentioned in your speech about um, how the devil is a crybaby and he this uses it as a last resort and to try to claim you. Now, I've seen people 
when they fall off the path, like usually starts off with like personal mm. problems. So do you feel that uh, when it says that the devil will try to claim you, do you think that people actually fall off the path? People can actually fall off the path. Could this be like their starting point to actually go astray when they actually do that? Like if they come into the community and then they have like personal issues with people and like that would be... Some, somebody becomes a submitter or is a submitter and then they start having personal issues. So if Satan is able to really drive the wedge, do you think by him claiming, could that yeah. be his way to claim the person and actually let that person actually go astray all the way? Yes, I do, because um, everyone has different weaknesses, and I think that Satan will exploit whatever weakness you have. So if your weakness is, you know, relationships with other people or, you know, feeling sensitive or anything like that, I think that it could be exploited. I think when the, uh, the Messenger of the Covenant says that it's the last stand, um, I think that is for the believers because... Um, they have gotten rid of, it. he even says, you know, they, they've shown that their devotion to God, they show that they believe in the messenger and the scripture, that they believe in all these things. But then the last stand is to try to create um, rifts in, between them and other believers, which can be dangerous and lead to, uh, like I said, if they say something truthful, it could cause them to say, I don't want to stand by that person, but they're saying something truthful that is correct. So. Okay, um, so like, um, oh, hey. hey, um, so in your speech you had said, oh, like, we have, we have belief, um, in, like, no emotion. I just want to know, like, genuinely, um, can we have belief with no emotion, or, like, do you think that emotion is mixed in with belief? Oh. Like, I, like, I'm, like, I actually, like, <laughs> don't know, so, like, yeah, yeah. any um, explanation you have. Of course. Uh, she asked that, it, do you want, or I can do it. she asked if the, so, uh, there was a part in my speech where I said that we are unified by our belief and not our emotion. And so she was asking if, like, emotion and belief can, like, coincide, I guess. Um, and I do believe, like, I love my Senator family. And that is a true emotion, mashallah, that I have that I really care about them and I want the best for them. Um, but like Aaron was saying, um, it all has to do with, whether or not they are believers in God, right? Um, of course, like, my grandmother, she's not a believer, and I care about her, and I respect her, but I, um, you know, I don't have that same kind of love that I have for a submitter because we have the same goals in our life, and we can practice together, and um, mashallah, uh, it's a it's a blessing. So I think that emotion can like coincide, but when it comes down to it, you have to be logical about your choices and your decisions, and you have to go off of what God says in the Quran. Woo! Okay. Thank you. Hannah. 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 Where? Hannah. <laughs> I'm going on American Idol. <laughs> Just kidding. You should. Um. Mashallah, such a awesome speech, and I'm not saying that just because you gave me a shout out. Um, but what I wanted to say was, uh, what your talk reminded me. Uh, your talk reminded me of uh, when the messenger said, "There's nothing uh, in this world worth getting upset over," and I think it's uh, like. Your talk and then Brenda's talk is important for us to know that whatever little uh, personal uh, conflicts that we have with each other, to squash it. Because I can't tell you how many people I've talked to who want to come to our community. Who, like, we're so blessed. We're so, like, we're humongous. We have so many people. I can call Mena on a Monday night, you on a Tuesday night, Lisa on a Wednesday night. It's, it's unheard of, you know? Sure. Forget it, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, honestly, like... Take this conference, take Hannah's speech as a as a reminder. Like, if you have something going on with somebody, to squash it, tell them that, uh, that you love them, and keep it moving. Masha, good job, Hannah. Thank you. One more. One more. So I think it's only right that we say how awesome Hannah is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Hannah <laughs> is one of the most selfless people I've ever met. Is, and point A is she's engaged to Omid. Uh, and she is excellent at giving reminders with kind enlightenment. Mashallah. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Woo!
One more. I'll go and then uh, we'll... I have one question. Yes. Would you please repeat one more time what is the uh, definition of a hypocrite? Because I was late for a few minutes. Yeah. I'm afraid I didn't hear what you said about that. So in the Quran, in Surah 2, verses 9 and on for a little while, it talks about how the hypocrites will say that they believe, but uh, they actually don't. And they don't know, they don't perceive, but the believers, and of course, God knows their true beliefs. So, yeah. Thank you.